Good evening. Welcome. My name is Barb Van Hoy and I am policy analyst for the Community Development Division at the City of Colorado Springs. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to our presentation of our draft annual action plan uh, for 2022. Thank you for being here. Local government really works best when residents participate and share their views. Our role at the city is to serve the needs of our community and you help us by, uh, by being here. Thank you so much. Uh, get my slides going. All right, so before we jump into the, um, the meat of tonight, I wanted to make sure that everyone knows how uh, some of these controls work. We're using Microsoft Teams Live and you have a couple of options. You can turn on subtitles with the little gear icon at the bottom of your screen. And after you turn them on, you can select from a number of different language options. And then we also really want you to participate. You can use the Q&A box um, that is on your screen as well. Provide any questions, comments, reactions, and you're welcome to um, send us questions throughout. And then we'll also leave um, hopefully significant time at the end for uh, questions and discussion. For anyone joining us uh, by telephone, you will be able to unmute yourself to ask a question, and you can do that using star six on your phone. So here is our agenda uh, for tonight's meeting. We are here to talk about the annual action plan uh, for community development. We'll um, do a little bit of introductions. We have a few of our esteemed colleagues on um, the meeting with us this evening. Um, we'll go through uh, explaining what the annual action plan is, what community development is, uh, and then we really want to hear from you. This really is our, our public hearing to get public input, and so we really hope you won't be shy. And then at the end, we'll talk about next steps and the timeline for the action plan. So uh, joining us tonight, uh, helping out with the call, in addition to myself, are Catherine Duarte, Senior Analyst, Naomi Clark, who's our CDBG and ESG Project Manager, and one of our newest uh, staff members is Angelina Canyas, Senior Administrative Assistant. Thank you all for being here and helping out. And uh, some of them will likely be able to answer questions that I won't even be able to answer. So that's us, and I hope you will tell us about you. Uh, so this is our neighborhood roll call. Uh, for those of, uh, uh, those of you who are here, we hope you will enter into the Q&A box your name, maybe your neighborhood or your zip code or your agency. If you are um, with an organization, maybe one of our partner organizations, um, we do like the fact that these digital events uh, can create better accessibility. It's easier to attend, but it's harder to connect. So the more we know uh, who's here and who's with us, um, that kind of helps us feel connected. So throughout the meeting, um, we hope you will share who, uh, who you are, who's with us. So what is community development? So the community development division um, manages the three uh, entitlement grants that come through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And, um, and these grants are the Community Development Block Grant, the Home Investment Partnership, and the Emergency Solutions Grant. Uh, community development broadly includes many activities that support decent housing, strong neighborhoods, economic opportunities, um, particularly for low and moderate income persons and for people with special needs, such as seniors and um, people with disabilities. So these are the three um, uh, grants that are um, a large majority of the work that our division um, manages, and we'll talk about uh, each of them in more detail as we go along. 
some of the other work that the community development division manages um, include other um, other resources that finance affordable housing and related activity. So these include um, helping to allocate private activity bonds and low income housing tax credits to build more affordable housing in our community. We also work with um, other agencies to create development incentives for more affordable housing. We collaborate with public agencies um, to create those. Uh, and in fact, we have a new um, program launching around that that you can read about on our website. And then we also help to manage uh, relief funds with the pandemic in the last couple of years. Um, our division has uh, helped to manage the CARES Act funds, emergency rental assistance, uh, and more. So what is the annual action plan? The annual action plan is um, really a document that describes in detail the resources um, and the activities that we use to, um, to promote community development and to build stronger neighborhoods um, and to uh, carry out these activities that um, really serve our community. <clears throat> And it is, um, uh, and it lays out both the resources um, and also the detailed goals and activities um, in a lot of different ways. It includes especially the federal funds, but also non-federal funds and resources uh, for these activities. And um, today's meeting, we're really going to go over what is in that plan. And we, uh, and I'll say again, as I'll say many times, we really hope to get your feedback and input as we're going along. Uh, so again, please feel free to answer, ask questions at any point. So the annual action plan is part of our five-year planning cycle. So as part of the um, receiving these entitlement grants through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, um, we are required to do some very um, rigorous uh, data gathering and planning for utilizing all of these funds. So the annual action plan is part of our five-year consolidated plan that covers 2020 to 2024. And that, um, and that plan includes uh, an in-depth data analyses, including housing needs assessment, housing market analysis, um, and a strategic plan, as well as several, several elements, such as an anti-poverty strategy, um, uh, maps, and all kinds of uh, interesting analysis. But then uh, throughout that five-year Time, plan, time span, as things change every year, we want to reassess and make sure that we're still on track. So this annual action plan for 2022 is our third year uh, uh, in our planning cycle. And as part of that, we follow a citizen participation plan. In order to receive and utilize these funds, we are required to um, hold a pretty high standard for citizen participation. That includes the 30-day um, Public, uh, public comment period that we're in the middle of right now. That goes until uh, January 12th. Um, it includes um, uh, the um, holding the public hearings um, and all kinds of different ways that we, um, that we work on soliciting uh, public input. And then uh, after we are getting all that input, putting together our five-year plan, doing the annual action plans every year. We also produce a consolidated performance evaluation report that reports on the impact and effectiveness of the work that we're doing. So that gives you some context for, uh, for the annual action plan. So now for some details. <clears throat> so this, um, Pardon me just a moment as I make sure I have my right notes up. Okay, so the formal plan that is required uh, by the Housing and Urban uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development um, 
can be uh, very long, a little bit dense, and sometimes hard to follow. So what we've done this year is we've created a four page graphic summary that gives you a really nice overview of what the funds are that we have to spend, what the um, what the objectives, what the, the goals and purposes are that really makes it a lot easier to see um, how we're utilizing the funds. Um, but at the same time throughout this presentation and also on our website, you'll be able to kind of see a guide for um, how to relate this graphic summary um, and the high level overview to the specific plan. So you'll see on this slide at the bottom left, it says the AP 15 expected resources. So what this slide shows are uh, the expected uh, grant amounts that we um, expect that we're going to get that we're planning to utilize. And uh, in the formal plan, you can see the details under the AP 15. And it's important to note here that these um, that this is our best guess of how much we will receive and um, we won't know until Congress passes its budget <laughs> and that has not happened yet. So we start the planning early. We have some pretty good expectations for about the amounts that we'll get. And then once we know exactly how much we'll receive, we're able to make um, percentage adjustments for each of our goals that we're funding. Are there any questions? Hey Barb, this is Naomi. I don't see any questions in the Q&A box quite yet, but may want to give folks time over the phone if they want to unmute themselves to ask any questions. Thanks. And remember, you can use star six to unmute yourself. Again, feel free to um, send or, or ask those questions at any time. So one of the things this slide shows is that the expected resources really come from the three main grant programs, but we also receive program income, which essentially are um, payments on loans, uh, and those come through the community development block grant and home um, program income that we'll talk about in a later slide as well. As you can see, the um, largest grant program is community development block grant, uh, and then next is home, and then ESG. So our proposed allocation of funds can be broken down by the five primary objectives. These are also called the priority needs in our action plan and in the consolidated plan. As you can see over on the bottom left, that's the AP 20 annual goals and objectives in the long formal plan. So basically, this is how we uh, are proposing and plan to allocate funds from those three programs as well as the program income. And as you can see, the vast majority, we are planning to allocate toward affordable housing. Uh, and then um, all of these different uh, these different objectives. And just as a reminder, these objectives are those that were selected as part of the five year consolidated plan. So each year we look at these objectives, um, what these goals, the goals and objectives are, what are the strategies that we have been using, what we think might be um, better. Uh, some of these have uh, changed a little bit within that planning framework, particularly as things have changed so much with the pandemic. So first we'll talk about affordable housing, the largest chunk, which is 3.5 million. So this focuses on increasing the supply and preserving existing inventory of affordable housing. So affordable housing funding within the annual action plan comes from both community development block grant uh, funds and also home funds. Between those two, there are um, a range of activities that include providing home modification for disabled seniors, um, building homes and apartments for rental and home ownership, and then also providing down payment and rental assistance. In 2022 program year, we anticipate serving 743 households uh, through these affordable housing programs. And to give you a sense of what that means, in order to qualify under the HUD definition of affordable housing, a home must be owned or um, owned by or 
um, reserved for households that are below the area median income or AMI. Uh, projects often target a range of those different incomes, um, but these are the guidelines that HUD provides for who can be eligible. So this gives you a sense in Colorado Springs, a four person household, the area median income is 82,400. And so the neighborhoods or households populations that we target are at various um, areas along the 80, um, percent or 60 percent or 30 percent uh, AMI. So a little more about affordable housing. Uh, the community development block grant funds that support affordable housing um, include support for uh, ADA disability access modifications, weatherizing homes, lead abatement, um, urgent structural repairs. And these programs um, are often funded through or to single source partner agencies, for example, Brothers Redevelopment and Habitat for Humanity. Um, those are among the many partner agencies that the city works with to actually um, carry out the work that uh, we fund through these grants. And the affordable housing funds that come through the Home Investment Partnerships Program, these are the ones that can be dedicated to new construction of multifamily apartments, and they require long-term affordability. The minimum is 20 years. So funding supports new construction of homes, and then some of these funds also go toward down payment assistance and tenant-based rental assistance. These funds are also distributed both through competitive applications on the Community Development Division's website. So developers can um, find our developer portal, get information and apply there. And we also make some direct awards to single source partner agencies as well. Right, if no more questions, we'll go along. So uh, after affordable housing, uh, we also support human services. So this is one of our five objectives. You often hear the term um, internally, we talk about um, public services, um, but that generally means um, human services. So this funding supports services and quality of life improvements, um, especially for special needs and low income residents. So this funding includes um, services like housing navigation, case management, meals, transportation, job training, um, mental health, self-sufficiency. I'm really just reading in case we have some folks on the phone who can't see the slides, um, but you can see here the range of those kind of services that this um, funding supports. And we anticipate in our program year 2022 that we will be able to help around 2,500 residents um, receive this critical assistance. And the human services um, activities are funded through the Community Development Block Grant. And more information again, um, if you want to dive into that full annual action plan, you can look in the, the AP38, which is a long table that um, provides a project summer summary for each one of these projects. Hey Barb, this is Naomi. We had a quick question that came in the Q&A. Uh, the question was, how would I apply for some of these services? I'm so glad you asked that question. So all of these services are actually provided by partner agencies that we fund. So, um, you know, nonprofits like, for example, um, Catholic Charities, they put together a funding application. Uh, if they are successful, they win those funds and it's through those agencies that people can get help. We do have on our website um, a, a really great page that specifically focuses on um, emergency housing resources, but it provides contact information and phone numbers for a range of agencies that both provide housing support and other support. So on our website, that's um, at coloradosprings.gov forward slash community development. And one of the top um, 
uh, one of the boxes on that top page says emergency housing resources. And if you click that, you'll be able to find a um, list of many resources. And probably one of the best ones is 211, which is a phone number you can call and United Way will help uh, connect you with um, the services that you need. Thanks for asking that. Are there other questions? All right. Um, so as I mentioned, the funding uh, for these services goes through a competitive grant application um, process, and we're expecting those to open in the applications to open in March. For anyone who is with an agency that is interested in applying, the best way to get information is to make sure that you are signed up for our Community Development Division newsletter. And you can uh, find a link to subscribe to that again on our website uh, homepage at Community Development. Next, we have economic development. Uh, the amount that we are projecting for that is 177,000. And uh, the economic development objective includes creating neighborhood economic development opportunities. And this is an example of one of those areas that we pivoted after the pandemic um, started. We originally had planned to utilize these funds in a little bit different way, but it became clear that especially um, in some neighborhoods with uh, some of the smallest businesses that often provide some of the most um, robust uh, employment opportunities were not necessarily able to get the um, pandemic relief support or um, just not having access to it. So last year we piloted a really successful program that provided training support and grants for micro enterprise um, businesses and we are um, looking forward to um, continuing that program in 2022. We expect to support uh, 10 uh, businesses that way. All right, next area is public infrastructure. So um, this year um, we are uh, anticipating uh, to receive about um, $884,000 as part of the community development block grant that will be dedicated toward um, expanding and improving public infrastructure and facilities. So what this, um, what this area includes are things like building or making accessible community buildings. Sometimes that could include, for example, uh, our community centers, sometimes their transit. Um, they could be service agencies that serve the public uh, and we help make them more accessible or improve them and help maintain um, that infrastructure to serve residents. And this year we uh, project that we will uh, help 7,500 residents through excessive, accessible community buildings, transit, and service agencies. And uh, like the human services, the public infrastructure funding is generally allocated through um, actually both competitive applications and through um, uh, single source um, agencies, for example, uh, Mountain Metro Transit for those transit stops. Uh, and then in 2022, we do anticipate opening um, funding applications for uh, infrastructure grants. And those applications we expect to open in February. And with the help of some uh, prior year funds, we anticipate making a million dollars available uh, through that NOFA and the minimum grant amount uh, we expect to be 250000 Again, um, make sure that you are subscribed to our newsletter in order to get information about those grants. Um, and I did want to also mention um, that uh, the funding um, priorities 
for facilities this year, we have been identifying um, some important needs around health equity in the built environment and also supporting school district 11 in uh, neighborhood improvements near high priority campuses in low to moderate income neighborhoods. Again, more detail in the, the complete plan uh, you can read about. Are there questions about uh, public infrastructure? No questions in the Q&A. All right, <clears throat> so moving along. Next, uh, next priority or um, objective area is preventing homelessness. So um, uh, major funding uh, for work to prevent homelessness comes through the Emergency Services Grant Program which uh, although some of the community development block, pro, uh, block grant funds also support um, homelessness prevention, the ESG program is um, uh, wholly dedicated to that, um, that goal. And a portion of the ESG funds are also dedicated to support the community-wide homeless data management system, which is called HMIS. And that system is administered by the Pikes Peak Continuum of Care. So funding, uh, funding around preventing homelessness from the ESG program includes supporting uh, homeless prevention services, rapid rehousing, outreach, emergency shelter, and supportive services. Along with the community development block grant, we expect um, the uh, NOFA to be available in um, March of 2022. Oh, and I did want to just point out um, that we anticipate serving about 3,000 people this year um, uh, in, with sheltering, uh, counseling, and homelessness prevention. And around uh, homelessness prevention, in addition to the funding that we provide through emergency service grant awards, the city also has a full time homeless prevention and response coordinator um, that we work with who collaborates with um, with uh, regional agencies and other service providers to support regional efforts and to help manage the city's homeless initiative. So those are the details about each of these um, of these areas of objectives. So again, those are affordable housing, human services, economic development, preventing homelessness, and public infrastructure. Uh, and then about 14% of the funds uh, go toward administration, compliance, and um, running the NOFAs and uh, and doing all that work. And um, Again, these are the objectives that were laid out in the five year consolidated plan and the complete action plan goes into um, additional detail about. Uh, so that really covers the um, meat of what's in the annual action plan, uh, what we're proposing to support and fund and uh, this year. And then I really wanted to talk a little bit more about how public participation influences the plan. That's really why we're here tonight. We want to make sure that residents of Colorado Springs uh, understand what we're planning and really have an opportunity to learn about and provide your input and feedback. So again, um, we follow a citizen participation plan. For this annual action plan, we held four public meetings in October, uh, provided some online videos. Uh, we um, send out news releases and some surveys and also in our weekly newsletter, all of which help to solicit input into writing this draft. In addition to that public participation, we held 15 formal consultations with um, partner agencies, advocates, and community leaders uh, to help inform the plan. And then in addition to those consultations and public comment, uh, the City Council will consider this at the end of the 30-day um, public comment period. Um, and there will be also an opportunity for citizen comment during that process. 
And then also you'll see that reference the AP 10 and the AP 12. Those are the sections of the um, of the draft annual action plan that go into detail about all of that public participation. And I will say, having been uh, uh, on staff for a little over a year now and helping to coordinate um, these uh, planning processes, I've been really impressed with how much uh, how much help and substantive input we get from the community and from agencies that really does make a difference. So um, please do send in your your comments and your ideas. Uh, it really is understanding what uh, people, what the residents in our community are experiencing that help us know uh, the best way to utilize these funds. And that really does uh, make a difference in our planning. So as I've mentioned uh, throughout this presentation, um, how to sort of connect these um, this information to the formal plan. Here are some of the areas that I've mentioned that you can um, cross reference. So the HUD annual action plan format is um, required. It sort of comes through uh, the federal database where we enter all of the information. And so the AP05 is the executive summary that gives a nice broad overview and it describes the five-year plan priority needs and goals. And then it's the AP20 that um, goes into detail about each of those goals and objectives. And then the project summary, the AP38, um, is a table that provides, uh, that breaks out uh, information under each one of those objectives, uh, the funding amount, what the goals are, and what our anticipated outcomes are. And then um, for those of you who are looking for more information, I really recommend uh, digging into the AP55 uh, section, which is affordable housing. There are several subsections under that that talk about a lot of the other actions that we're taking, um, a, some of the analysis that goes into how we're directing the funds. Um, and uh, there's a lot of great information in there. Any questions as we're going through that? Hey, Barb, would you be able to tell folks where they would find the plan? So if somebody was interested in reading our consolidated plan or action plan, where where specifically would they go to find this information? Absolutely. Um, on one of the later slides, on one of the last slides, I've got a little picture of it. So on our website and um, it looks like Catherine has put one um, URL in there to the emergency housing resources. Thank you. Um, on our website, uh, the if you go to City of Colorado Springs forward slash community development, uh, on the left side menu at the bottom uh, is a menu item that says plans. So there's annual plans and there's other plans. If you click there, you can actually see an archive of several of our past annual action plans and the five-year consolidated plans. And you can also find our um, uh, the citizen participation plan. And then for this proposed draft annual action plan, you can find that on our annual action plan um, page. So again, from our homepage, Colorado Springs uh, org forward slash community development on that home page at the top in the middle is a link for the annual action plan and on that page you can download a copy of the full plan you can download and read the four page uh, graphic summary uh, there's also a nice little explainer video uh, it gives you a little more of an overview of the annual action plan um, and the timeline and probably more information than uh, <laughs> Uh, than you're even looking for right now, but that's where you can find those. Thanks, Naomi. No problem. All right, so this is the point in the meeting that we would really like to hear from you. Uh, do these annual goals make sense? Uh, we're very interested in looking at how we can make equitable outcomes a reality. Uh, for these programs for our residents. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. What are you seeing in the community that's working? <clears throat> What's not working? Are these the right set of priorities? 
please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So one of the um, uh, one thing about our um, using Microsoft Teams is we know that there's a little bit of time lag from the time that I ask you a question and the time that you actually hear it and have a chance to um, type that into the Q&A box. So we're going to leave a little bit of extra time. Excuse me. Um, for that time lag and to uh, give you a chance to think about what your questions might be and to put them in there. For folks over the phone, if you hit star six, that'll allow you to unmute yourself. While you're uh, thinking of your questions, I'll just um, reiterate that also on that action plan web page, you will be able to find a copy of these slides. Um, they should be available. They might be available now, um, but at least uh, tomorrow. And we will also be posting this video online. OK, does this mean I did such a great job of explaining everything that there are no questions? I know there are more. We'd love to hear. Um, and also please know that uh, we will continue to take questions and feedback um, by email, um, by phone. I'll go ahead and um, the last slide will have the phone number on it, uh, which you can also find on that annual action plan um, website, the web page. Uh, and to give you a sense of the timeline and the process for preparing for the program year. Um, right now we are in the 30 day public comment period that goes until January 12th. And uh, you can provide feedback anytime um, during uh, that time for us to potentially include it in the final plan that is going to go to City Council that is scheduled to be heard in February. They will consider it at a work session meeting before voting on it at a subsequent council meeting. That will give you another opportunity to provide public input. And then um, our application um, periods will open uh, in February and March for grant applications. And then the program year begins April 1st. Hey Barb, we had a question come through um, and it was, are public infrastructure funds used for road repairs? Um, I can provide not the very best answer for that. Um, maybe Catherine can chime in. I think the short answer is no. However, um, there might be situations in which that's the case. Yeah, your hunch is largely correct, um, Barb. Um, CDBG funds are not meant to be a replacement for regular municipal maintenance work. Um, our funds are meant to improve and expand access um, for things like um, housing, ADA, um, compliance, um, you know, clean water, things like that. So it's really meant to enhance and um, again, improve, expand all those things. And it's not meant to be a um, replacement for um, what should be regular maintenance work. Um, but sometimes it does happen where we're doing, you know, curb and gutter in a, in a neighborhood um, where it didn't have any before. And, you know, as a result of that, um, maybe there's, you know, some, uh, you know, the city will do some uh, work that complements that. Um, that's hasn't happened since I've been here, but I, I know that that's uh, a possible 
complementary use of um, CDBG, but that's not how we design our um, our competitive processes. Perfect. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that comes to mind with that question is that we are funding um, ADA accessibility at some of the bus stops, and um, those could potentially end up uh, including a little bit of road maintenance because they're on the road, but it would only be within that context of creating accessibility, um, particularly for uh, low income or disabled residents. Do we have other questions? Anybody on the phone star six to unmute yourself? All right, well, please do avail yourself of uh, emailing or calling or sending us any other feedback or questions that you have after today's meeting. Um, Here's that uh, um, screenshot of where you can sign up for our email newsletter. So that's the Community Development Division's homepage, and that button is on the right to, um, uh, to subscribe. And then um, the, you can use the navigation menu on the left side. At the bottom, you can't see it on this, but uh, includes some of the past plans. Um, you can call us and email us, and we always really uh, appreciate hearing from folks. And again, thank you so much for being here. Um, we, uh, our, the work that we do, the planning that we do is always um, improved with, uh, with public input. All right, questions going once, going twice. <laughs> Looks like we're all going to get a little bit uh, time, a little bit of time back in our evenings. Um, again, thank you to Catherine, Naomi, and Angelina. Thank you everyone for being here, and we look forward to um, hearing from you uh, uh, throughout this process. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening. <laughs>